All right, guys, so here I have a 5R55E, and uh, he had uh, issues moving going down the road. And as you can see, I mean, it has, uh, it has a lot of trash in there. <clears throat> and this model right here takes a sensor uh, that reads the sun shield here. And not all models have this, but most models of the 5R55E have the... Uh, I'll put shaft speed sensor there. That's how you identify the four speed from a five speed. And the problem with this unit is that uh, besides having the issue with the gasket, as you see there, we have the second and fifth uh, band burn up. As you can see right there, it's burn up. But the main issue here is the sprag. As you can see, the sprag is all tore up. It, it actually flipped over and uh, that'll cause it not to move and uh, this thing was uh, once that flipped over the and the frictions burned here the planet doesn't come out of here that I mean this this frictions in here they're smoked uh, it's hard to separate and if I try to pry it out uh, it's gonna bend this uh, and damage it uh, and it's gonna be I mean uh, not worth to do that uh, and you can see here you know the since this is locked up and it was floating back and forth back and forth the pump washer got destroyed or got melted because it was against uh, it was against the, 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 the stator the pump itself and the pump is right here so uh, it was putting a lot of pressure to it uh, and I mean it, it melted it melted the washer the forward clutches look all right. The direct clutches look somewhat all right. The reverse band looks all right. The servos look kind of fair. Uh, they look in good shape. As I mentioned here, uh, this uh, the valve body gaskets are torn. And hold on just one second. All right. So we're gonna do a complete overhaul on this thing. Uh, it is in good shape. I mean, we can just replace these pieces right here and get some gaskets. Uh, but as you can see, the, the, the teeth from the forward frictions, even though they look good, they are almost stripping out. Uh, I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up. But the teeth are like really, really, really thin. So it has miles on it. I mean, it's, I don't think it's ever been opened up. Uh, I don't have the torque converter here. But if the torque converter does not have paint just like that one, uh, it's never been worked on now. Let's move on to this other bench right here And this is what we are going to install on this unit Let's get these things out. So we got all three bands Two front bands. We got two bushings here on this one uh, The the pump bushing and the stator bushing front and you always want to replace this bushing here because if not you're gonna get a, a torque converter clutch a torque converter clutch stuck off code two-wheel drive filter and just the normal uh, shift kit it, although it says uh, 4R 4R or 4455 e is for both for the four speed and the five speed and here we have the overhaul kit or the uh, banner kit that's what we call them so this is our paper rubber rings and seals that's what the bag is called paper rubber rings and seals because the papers is the gaskets the rubbers is all the rubbers and the rings are the ceiling rings, which are in this bag, and then the seals, you know, the front and rear seal. And here we have the, uh, the frictions, and they are Borg Warner. Borg Warner is my first choice, as you can see there, Borg Warner. Uh, Ray Bestus is my second, and whatever's left over is whatever's left over. Sometimes uh, you cannot get frictions by choice, uh, and you know what's going on right now with all the uh, everything is scarce. Even parts, transmission parts, are hard to get, especially the 6L80s. Oh, man, we have with the converters on those things and the parts. They're dropping like flies, like dead flies. And, I mean, with all the shipping stuff that's going on because of all the politics, it's kind of hard to get parts. So here's the, the replacement washer. Here's the replacement drum. And here is the uh, replacement hub in Planet Assembly. Uh, 5R55E uh, It's a small sun gear like on the S and, and W uh, 
the they have two different sun gears and uh, this one being the older model is just one sun gear for all of them uh and the planet is different on the other ones as well uh and uh yeah a little bit of coffee yep all righty uh i'm gonna go ahead and start cooking this thing you know the cooker which means that i'm gonna put it in the parts washer and start washing the parts on this thing and uh this is a range sensor we've got all the little parts in here uh let's look at the pan even though the pan looks like uh like normal wear and tear we see a little bit of bushing material or it could be torque converter clutch material yeah because it looks like it looks like sand so this is from the torque converter torque converter clutch we look at the top of the valve body uh, on the gasket we see the same thing and this is just normal wear and tear and this right here on the magnet is uh it's just normal wear and tear from the frictions which they don't look bad but it's just normal wear and tear i mean they shed some uh uh, just like your brake pads do. Uh, I mean, that's how I can explain that. We see a little bit of brass right there, and that's part of this planet. It has uh, brass uh, uh, washers in between here in the pinions and the gears. And also, I mean, this is made out of brass as well, but it is a different color. It's a different material than the one I see right here. So this is, this is probably the one coming out from the pinions themselves. Let me see. And I think you uh, can see a little bit on this one, but it looks like these were well, worn out. They're they're gone. And the sun gears in here. I mean, you know, I mentioned I showed you the sun gear on the other one, but this looks normal. I mean, on like uh, if your transmission is working perfect, there's nothing wrong with it. And you see this. This is kind of normal. It's just normal wear and tear. Uh, but then the parts fell like this one. This is just worn out. The clearance is just out of specs. And what happened is just boop, it flipped over because there's too much there's too much clearance and uh, it's a one-way clutch or or a sprag this is what we call them and uh, it, it goes one way and it locks on the uh, on the opposite way and uh, when there's too much clearance it just flips over because the gap is too wide and it just flips it's just normal wear and tear and it's gonna happen I mean it happens it's just like brake pads I mean transmission parts they do wear as well all right, well, I'm going to get everything set up. I'm going to start washing everything and uh, put that thing in the cooker and start assembling this thing. All right, guys, well, I have uh, everything here. It's kind of like a little bit disorganized, but I mean, uh, we're going to go ahead and start assembling this thing. We're going to assemble just all the internal components first, and then uh, we're going to go to the other bench and we're going to put all these uh, uh, parts in the case and like always uh you got your uh, green goo green assembly lube and your blue the green is for the bearings and the washers you know to paste them together and then the blue is for all the rubber that's going to go into them all right so uh the fans behind me i'm real close to it and uh it's a little noisy but i got a microphone i got a lapel microphone on so uh i mean hopefully it'll come out all right uh anyways uh let's go ahead and start with this unit uh the first thing i need to show you i managed to get the the planet out of the drum let me show you the drum i have not taken the clutches out yet but if you see inside there all the springs are all in pieces in there i'm gonna take the i'm gonna attempt i have not uh, attempted to take the the pressure plate off this drum and uh, we're gonna see the damage in there all right so i'm gonna remove the snap ring and it came out easy i'm gonna remove the first clutch it's toasted it is toasted look at it man ain't got none on this side and it's it's all wave overheated I'm gonna remove the uh, well, the first steel. It's uh, dished, shaped. It's no good. Remove the other friction. I'm removing this so you can see uh, inside inside of there. And here's the other one, completely smoked on both sides. Remove the last steel. It's 
burn up. So these pieces are no good. And now you can see all the springs in there. In here, they're all, this thing rotated. Uh, I can attempt to take the, the, uh, I'm not sure if you can see in there, but they're all in pieces. The springs are all in pieces and looks like the piston is lifted up on this side. As a matter of fact, just hold that thought right there. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to take the uh, the snap ring off of this thing. So you can see. Is it gonna come out? It, it is compressing, so all right this thing's stuck in there I got the snap ring off I got the retainer off nothing happened to the retainer look at that all the springs are in pieces all the little uh, uh, retainers that, that retain the uh, springs, they're all capped off. You can see aluminum retainers inside the springs. That's what happened to this unit. Now, so here is the Sprague and the overdrive planet. Watch this. This is not supposed to this is not supposed to happen. Counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. This is not supposed to happen. This is flipped over. Like I mentioned on the on on the, before we started this video, this is flipped over. Now I'm gonna get my overdrive plant it over here I'm gonna paste the little bearing counterclockwise locks to the clock counterclockwise locks to the clock that's how it's supposed to be so this is our replacement uh, overdrive planet assembly and we don't need this anymore because we got a drum with it we got a drum with it and he has all the uh, spring retainers like you see here the spring retainers all right so let's go ahead and start uh let's go ahead and start with the forward drum i don't know i just picked the forward drum all right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna lubricate the inside like that all right so i'm gonna lubricate it so that we can install our piston in it just like that nice and lubed up you can use your fingers you can use a brush you can use whatever you want we're gonna get our forward piston and out of the overhaul kit we're gonna choose what belongs on there and this is a uh, it's called a leaf cut seal because or a square cut seal is not a lip seal like this one this is a lip seal and this one goes on on the other drum i'm going to show you the difference now i need the uh internal lead cut seal we got it on there now we're going to need our it doesn't have a wavy plate or a cushion plate but it does have this uh, rubber cushion for forward engagement and this does the same job as a wavy or a wave plate or a cushion plate uh, which a wave, wave plate is a cushion plate and this is our cushion rubber and this is going to cushion the engagements on forward sometimes it gets so burned up the forward frictions that this actually melt, melts into the uh, piston but I mean you put an overhaul kit and it's all there all right so let's go ahead and uh lubricate this thing this piston or were leaf cut seals
I know I got you on the wrong side, but it's all right. And this, we just push down on it. There we go. So we just push the piston down in it. That's it. All right, so in here I have all of our uh, return springs and retainers. So I'm gonna, out of here, I'm gonna choose all of the return springs that go on this drum, which are the large ones. And then the other two is the same for both drums. So I'm just gonna get them out and install them like that. And then I'm gonna go to my foot press and you guys seen me how to use foot press on some other videos and uh, I'm not gonna take you over there you can watch other videos that I have where I'm using the foot press and uh, and you'll know what I'm talking about one more spring we have all of our springs in it our spring retainer and I'm gonna go to the foot press and install the snap ring. Install the snap ring, adjust my foot press. As a matter of fact, I think on the other drum, on, on the last drum, I'm gonna show you how to, I'll take my foot press over there, close to the uh, bench and show you how to install that the snap ring and there's going to be a lot of parts that are going to be in the way from the foot press but I mean I'm just going to try and show you whatever whatever comes out like right now I'm struggling to get the my pliers are really really worn out and they're not they're not complying so I'm just going to get another set of pliers I'll be right back hold on Hold that thought. Hold that thought. All right. Now that was better. So now I got the uh, snap ring installed. I'm going to get the uh, forward steels. And uh, they are a little bit lubricated. We're going to get our forward frictions. forward frictions and I'm gonna show you something right quick now I have them here because they are draining and uh, they are directional and as you can see right here it says uh, top uh, somewhere around right here yeah right here it's a little wet and it's a little shiny that's why I mean but it, it is top so the top goes to the top that's pretty self-explanatory and then the grain from the friction goes this way so let's go ahead and uh, install our frictions this is a uh, steel and then we finish with our pressure plate and as you can see our grain on the forward frictions is uh, to the left and I think I showed you uh, I showed this on uh, 5R55S or W or one of those that I was doing uh, uh, shift kit uh, uh, not a shift kit but I, th I think it was a superior kit I don't remember exactly I'll, I'll look it up and I'll probably po post it somewhere on that corner or on that corner or whatever uh, wherever it ends up you know one of the cards or whatever all right so now in the back, as you can see from factory, the ceiling rings on the forward drum, they are like a brass type ceiling rings. As you can see, they're brass type and they're uh, butt cut like that. That's what they call them, butt cut. And our replacement ones are this uh, plastic type. Uh, ceiling rings and then they have this uh, can I can it focus it's focusing on if I take my face away it'll probably focus on this it's not focusing but it, ha it, it, it has like a locking like a locking uh, grooves where it locks in together alright so let's go ahead and install our first one 
So we remove the top one, install the top one, and then remove the bottom one, and install the bottom one, or you can do vice versa. But I try not to do both at the same time, like take both out at the same time. Uh, that's just a habit that I have. And I mean, there's nothing wrong if you take both of them out at the same time and install them both at the same time. But on the center support, uh, there was one time that I did both at the same time, right here, and one of these needles fell inside one of the ply holes. And it took me a while to get one of those little needles out of it, you know, out of there, because it ended up there. Now we're gonna use our green assembly goo and paste one of the bearings in there. Put it to the side. Now let's go ahead and assemble our direct drum. And we're gonna do the same application. We're gonna lube up the inside where the lip seal is gonna ride. You can use a brush like that, or you can use your fingers. It doesn't matter. And this is the small one. And this is the big piston. So we have, actually the overhaul kit comes with three lip seals. So this is the small one. That's the outer one. Well, let's install the inner one so we won't forget. And then, but the, uh, the lip goes towards the drum or towards the inside. And I've explained uh, how a lip seal works. The lip is gonna go towards the drum because the fluid is gonna come from the inside and then it expands the lip and it pushes the piston up to compress the frictions, just like a brake caliper does, you know? It just, it, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's just a brake, that's what it is. This is our forward, uh, forward drum and this is, you can imagine yourself that these are your brake pads and your ring gear on the inside is spinning. You wanna stop the drum from spinning you apply your brakes, or in other words, it's gonna break that ring gear, and it's gonna either turn the planet, you know, for first gear, or it just depends on how it works. All right, so this is the small one. We're, we're gonna talk about the lip seals. And then we have a second one, and then we have a third one. And right here it says, direct clutch outer lip seal, 1990 and up, except 97 and up. So 96 and up, it takes this one right here that comes in a little bag and uh, it's separated and then it's, it's uh, labeled. This one is gonna go on the overdrive drum. So we install the outer one. Now we install the inner one. And just like in, I explained right now, the, uh, the lip goes towards the drum and let's go ahead and lubricate it. We're gonna do the direct drum. Lubricate our lip seals. And uh, notice that it has like a, some type of a hat on the outside that you cannot get a, uh, a feeder gauge or a lip seal installer tool or anything like that for the outer one, just the inside. But on these forward ones, you don't need none of that. You just gra grab your drum, make sure it's nice and lubed up, and you get your piston nice and lubed up, put it in there, and just kind of rotate it. Rotate it a little bit, and it's already all the way down. Let's go ahead and get our, our uh, springs and install our springs. And I do not believe we're missing any springs. So we're gonna install it all the way around. Uh, but some builders leave one on each side out to uh, eliminate a little bit of resistance on the applying on the, on the piston towards the, uh, towards the clutches. And that's the, when you have uh, worn components for like uh, Valve body worn out, valve body war, I mean, uh, valves worn and stuff like that. Uh, it kind of helps it, the resistance of it. Now, we have two retainers that look the same. 
but they're not the same. The one with the castellations on it, this one, is going to go on the direct drum. And the one that doesn't have castellations on it, it's just has that fold on it, is going to go on our overdrive drum. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side. I'm not going to install the, the snap ring yet. I'm going to put the snap ring on the side here. And then I'm going to bring my foot pricks right here. And uh, we're going to install the snap ring on both of them. Just so you won't say, oh, man, come on. I want to see how you install the... Because some of you guys, I mean, that you just don't want to go to the other videos and watch the other videos, you know, how I show how to use the foot press to install these. All right, same operation. Let's go ahead and uh, lube up our lip seal, the outer one and the inner one. Just like that. Same operation. Twist it or turn it, and it falls down, just like that. Just to let you know that this is about the only transmission you can do that on this uh, pistons because of the design of the lip seals. Like, uh, you want to try to do that on a 4L60E or a 700R4, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen for you. You need a lip seal installer too. You want to do it on an FIOD, which is the, the old forwards overdrives. You actually need special tools to install that. And this one is missing one spring. So whenever you have a one spring missing like that, go to the opposite side and just remove the one directly across it. You want to make sure that the, the, it's equal, just count the springs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you got nine on each side and you got one left over, which is no big deal. That's what a lot of builders do to this drum and to the forward drum as well. But those are full and this one's missing one. And that takes care of that problem. And you do the, you know, old school, whatever, builder's mod or whatever you want to call that thing all right i'm going to put you on pause and then i'm going to get my uh, foot press over here and we'll install the uh snap rings on these two drums that way i don't have to move the camera over there i'll just point straight down and boom all right like i said there's some parts from our from my footprints that are going to be in the way which is you know the top of it uh and i'm just pointing straight down and uh, you just uh, position your foot press, you know, kind of adjust it. And I have my uh, old uh, snap ring pliers and uh, these are the ones that I used on the other drum. But these are the ones that you're supposed to use, but they're worn out. So let's, let's try this again. Let's try that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and compress this. And actually, uh, you, you don't need a uh, snap and pliers for this one. You can just go around it. Go around it like that. Put it in the groove. And let go. But on the other drum, I'm going to try and use the snap and pliers. So you can see what's going on. So here's the other drum. I'm going to go ahead and compress. I have it a little bit open to the edge so that hopefully the camera will catch it and it's not compressing the way I want for it to compress. I'm going to use my pliers. I'm going to use these ones. Open up the snap ring. And get it down. Get it down into the groove. And it's not compressing right for some reason. There we go. Get it into the groove. Now I'm going to get this uh, drum closer to you. Because I want to show you something. So these little castellations. They hold the snap ring from popping open. So you want to go far enough down on the... Uh, 
return spring retainer to get your snap ring in in the groove pass those castellations and then release and those castellations they hold the snap ring all right i guess uh, that's it for this and let's go back to the bench all right, well, let's continue with this thing. Let's do some quick assembly here, uh, very quickly. Let's get the overdrive drum closed over here. Move all this to the side. I'm gonna grab my two frictions and they also say top on it. So I have the top meaning the uh, pressure plate and these, the grain goes clockwise towards the right so you start with a uh, steel friction steel friction and pressure plate and the snap ring let's go ahead and put our or install our little star for the sun gear the sun gear itself Now that we have this assembly like that already assembled, the overdrive uh, planet, I get my finger and I just hold the sun gear in place like that. And then uh, wiggle it so that the planet engages on the friction itself. And it's tricky sometimes, but it'll go in. You want to support it on the bench or whatever there you go both frictions engaged and you can see that the planet it's almost touching the drum so that's the way it is so we have this assembly already done let's get the frictions for our direct drum and same thing top the grain goes towards the right so I have my pressure plate up uh, on the bottom so I'm going to do it like this. And just make sure that all the frictions are uh, pointed to the same side. The grain goes to the, uh, to the right. There we go. Let's get our direct drum and start with a uh, steel friction, steel friction. Steel friction, steel friction, steel friction, and pressure plate. That's the. This is the reason I like Bohr Warner. If you look in here, the pressure plate. I mean, yeah, the pressure plate is almost to the snap ring groove, meaning that. Just like it came from factory, that's the way it's being assembled. If you get some other friction, some other type of frictions, Raybestos is real good for the uh, factory clearances or the thicknesses on the frictions. There's some other companies that have no brand, and I like to call them the lime green frictions. And sometimes you get those frictions and they start debonding by themselves. They're so cheap, you buy them online everywhere, and they're just garbage that's what they are on those you have to be careful and you have to check your clearance you know you get your uh, thing and you measure your clearance on the other ones on this is safe to do it like this I mean uh, but we can actually check the clearances as well and uh, I guess we'll do that on one drum and uh, if we go from there but for now let's go ahead and put let's go ahead and go ahead and assemble the drum assemblies so here we already have the ceiling rings we already have our bearing we have this uh, direct drum assembled we're gonna put this uh, forward drum on the top we're gonna get our forward drum ring gear there's a bearing that goes in between the planet and the uh, the ring gear the forward planet and as you can see there the the, the the shape of the bearing the the folded side goes towards the planet so we're gonna paste that here with the folded side going towards the planet paste it in here 
get our forward planet, install it. This is a six pinion planet on a 4R44. It only has four pinions and the other two are empty. But the housing on the planet is exactly the same. You can actually get 5R55 uh, planets and put them on the 4R44s if you want to. I mean, there's no big deal. You can do that. And there's this uh, step little bushing type washer kind of deal in there. And what I like to do, this bearing here, this side is going to go towards our forward drum and this side is going to go towards our uh, planet assembly. So I put on enough assembly glue, uh, assembly goo or the green goo. Stick it in there. Get our forward planetary gear assembly in here. And our sun shield. Now, notice that in on, on this year model, there's no bushings on this sun shield, on the sun shell, or on the sun gear. Install it here. And there we go. Now, I was going to mention something about the sun shield, but on the A4L, this is different. Uh, it, it, it has a little spacer that you put here, but the spacer on this one is actually going to go on our center support. Now our transgo shift kit comes with ceiling rings and all that, but for some reason, don't ask me why, it's just a habit I got. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste this on the center support like that, this uh, shim right here. And I'm going to get the, uh, the new ceiling rings that come on the overhaul kit. Now the shift kit comes with this green uh, ceiling rings for the center support and by all means if you want to put them on install them but for some reason it's just a habit of mine I like to put or install the ones that come on the overhaul kit because I mean I got the overhaul kit but there's a reason for those rings sometimes when uh, these are worn out <clears throat> uh, they do not seal well on the uh, direct drum and you have issues but since I got them brand new I'm going to go ahead and put them on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> remove the top one. And same thing here. It's a butt cut ceiling ring. And the new ones, they have this engagement kind of a deal on them. I don't know how to describe that, but it's not, it's not butt cut. Install the bottom and install the top. Just make sure you're on the groove itself. Uh, when past a little bit to the bottom. Okay, just like that. So now we have this assembled. Move all this to the side. Gonna flip it over. This bearing goes here. I'm just gonna set it there. I'm not gonna paste it. I'm gonna lower my center support here and I'm gonna air check it. Hold that thought right there. Where you at? As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and disassemble this. So you can see when I air check it, you can see the, the clutches compressing on the forward, on the forward drum. So let's take the planet out and uh, can we get close? Let's see. Let's see if we can get close over here. Whoops. Uh, let me adjust you guys right quick. Right there. All right. There we go. Uh, 
All right. So we're gonna put air into one of these. This is the direct, the middle one is the direct. Then the forward, the forward, that's lubrication. And the one on the right is the forward. See right there? Let's go ahead and measure the clearance on the forward. See it there? Probably not. If I move this way, okay. All right. Well, let's see. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, zero this thing. Zero it out. All right, it's kind of a, I mean, you guys have a better view than I do because I'm, I'm in the way. Let's go ahead and apply this. We got 58 thousandths of an inch. Uh, it went out of zero. There we go. It's about 60 thousand. We got six frictions. Uh, theory, uh, 10 thousandths per friction. We got about 60 thousandths uh, clearance on that. And like I mentioned, the pressure plate, it's right at the snap ring groove. If I go this way, it's right at the snap ring groove. And I noticed that when I was trying to hold the center support, uh, it was going down. That's why at first, oh shit, we're not on here. Let's go ahead and zero this thing out again. Let me get this thing straight up. Straighten up. Straighten this thing up and down. There we go. Zero this thing out again. And I'm, I'm going to try not to press push on the bench. 50, almost 60,000 blah, 56 thousandths of an inch. Which is good, it's just, uh, just to show, just to show you that, uh, that we're, we're on the right track. When you get good frictions like this, you're close to the snap ring groove. You're right on the money. All right, so we got our forward and direct drum assembled. We got our overdrive, uh, uh, overdrive drum assembly assembled too. This is our reverse drum. Let's go ahead and uh, put some, uh, install some of our bearings on here. With the fold going towards the uh, uh, there, we're just gonna set this in there for now. Install this bearing with the fold uh, going towards the sun shell. Put the assembly glue glue on the wrong side. Okay. We have our snap ring. Now I know I'm zoomed in. 
of course my center support is over here flip this thing over install the bearing and the fold going towards the overdrive assembly go ahead and zoom out a little bit okay we're gonna go ahead we're all the way zoomed out so that's, this is how it goes. I mean, that's how it assembles. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, assemble our drum. I mean, our drum, our pump. And I have a video just on how to assemble the pump assembly. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go put you guys on pause and I'm gonna change my bushing on my uh, bell housing and let's go ahead and assemble our pump. And then we're going to the other bench and boom, assemble it. All right, guys. So. I already uh, built my pump and unfortunately I clicked the wrong button on the camera. But anyways, uh, I have a video on how to assemble this thing. I mean, I, I used a torque converter, the torque converter is down here and I, I put my new bushings in it, you know, the, the stator bushing front and uh, the pump bushing which goes on the bell, on the bell housing. And uh, I lubricate my uh, gears, the inner and outer gears already installed the uh, the two uh, ceiling rings and uh, here's the pump washer that that was melted you know the the one that we're replacing and I also put that uh, or install the input shaft uh, to uh, center it so before you tighten up the bolts and you torque them uh, you got to have your input shaft in and uh, you align the holes on the spacer plate uh, or the pump wear plate that's what it's called and uh, you tighten up your bolts, you torque them, right? So uh, that's what it is. I got a video on it. I'll probably put it uh, either he here or here somewhere. Uh, so you can go watch that video uh, on how to align uh, pump alignment. Or, uh, I think it's called pump alignment without tools or something like that. Because I'm not using any tools and the only tool I'm using or what I'm using as a tool, it's a torque converter. And there you go. And usually I keep that torque converter there in the corner and uh, it's just there. Uh, also, we're gonna put together this transmission. I'm not gonna go through the valve body. I'm gonna do that probably, uh, I'll probably do another later, uh, another video later on the valve body because it's gonna get too long now and I gotta get this thing done and ready. But I do have, the good news is that I do have uh, another one of these out of a Ford Ranger that was never picked up. And I think uh, we can use that, uh, that as, uh, as uh, cause this is gonna go to the, to the, to the trash. Uh, so uh, we can probably use, use that for video purposes only, you know, and we go through the valve, through that valve body and we go through, uh, you know, through the rest of the stuff. So there's a video on the pump. You can go to uh, look it up on the channel or I'll put it somewhere there. Now let's go ahead and just uh, assemble everything inside the barrel of the case uh, so we can get this thing done. And uh, I know I got stuff over there on that bench because that's where I built the drums and stuff. That's where you had it. Uh, I had you guys before. And uh, this one, I don't hang it because it doesn't have provisions to hang it. But uh, we're going to use uh, an old uh, Chrysler case that I got. I got two of them that I use. Actually, I got three uh, that I use for building transmissions that I cannot hang. Uh, now, you could hang it somehow, but I mean, it's very little. It's, it's a small unit, so it doesn't need to be hanged. I'm gonna put you guys on pause and I'm gonna lower the camera down because I want you to look inside the, the barrel of the case to see how this thing gets assembled. All right, hold that thought and put you on, on hold and uh, lower you guys down. All right guys, like most of, most of you guys already know I got my own way of doing things. So, uh, However, I'm going to show you how to do this thing. It's not going to be however the book calls for. I do the I do the these things the way that is easier for me to do, and 
the fastest and easiest way for me to do it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, already put the new O-rings on this on the reverse servo. I'm going to lubricate it because uh, we're going to use it right now to hold our reverse band. All right, and uh, all that thought, let me go get the uh, cover and two bolts because we're going to use two bolts to hold the servo with the cover in the uh, servo bore. All right, so I got the cover and I got two bolts. Now we're going to install, uh, we're gonna drop the reverse band in there and make sure it's a, uh, let me get a long screwdriver, hold on. Hold that thought right quick. Just to use as a pointer. So here are the lugs in the case. Uh, not sure if you can guys see it, but here are the lugs in the case uh, where the band is gonna anchor itself and then over here, it's uh, where the tip of the servo is going to hold that band. So, uh, so I'm going to use this long screwdriver as a uh, as a pointer. Uh, now I'm going to get my uh, reverse drum assembly, and we have our low reverse sprag and a bearing here. And I'm going to install it, and I I hold it like this, like this, and I'm going to turn clockwise. And be careful with the band not to get him off the lugs so you kind of position it so right now it's positioned but it's not all the way in to get it all the way in I'm gonna go clockwise now I'm all the way in I'm all the way in and now we're I'm still gonna check here to make sure that I'm still in position right there and now I'm flipping the case over so you guys can see, but, but I normally don't do that. And uh, you can get a screwdriver and just, you see that the, the band is not aligned on the hole. Just align it on the hole. Drop your servo in there like that. It doesn't take any springs. The uh, A4LDs, uh, the, the governor control units, the earlier ones, they do take a spring. So now we are going to... Uh, just put two bolts on it just to hold it in place so that the servo won't fall off and uh, because you want that band uh, on the anchors if the band falls off the anchors then you're not gonna have any reverse so I got the intermediate uh, band anchor uh, ready I got my output shaft uh, to uh, rear planted ring gear ready and then this little needle bearing most of the time you need to replace it because the needles fall off I got this one ready too as well and here's our planet our uh, sun shell guide or fluid dam whatever you want to call this thing our rear planetary remember, remember we already got the bearings on it and I got two front bands ready for for this thing now I need to get my output shaft and my uh, parking gear So here's my output shaft. This uh, washer here is a three tap washer. It's gonna go here on the case itself, right here. And you can see the two, two, two taps go to the top and then the one tab goes uh, to the six o'clock position like that. This right here, is the reluctor for the output shaft speed sensor so if you change this and it's a 5r that has the speed sensor on it that takes a speed sensor make sure that he has the reluctor on it because the 4r don't have this so if you mix them it's not going to shift because he uses the output speed sensor uh, to shift your transmission drop that in there let's drop the output shaft what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn clockwise and pull out so that I can align my bearing. So turn clockwise and pull out a little bit so that I can have a little bit of lip right here against the, the sprag race. The sprag race stays in the case. I'm going to get a little bit of a 
green goo just to paste it down there a little bit of a gringo on it now our rear planet ring gear I'm holding the output shaft with my left hand I'm gonna get my pliers some of my snap ring pliers hold my snap ring and stick it in there holding the output shaft toward this direction because I don't want the snap ring group to move now I'm gonna get my uh, long screwdriver which is the pointer I'm gonna push the snap ring into the groove there we go now my snap ring it's inside the groove now I'm gonna get uh, the reverse drum rotate clockwise and pull all the way to the front I want to pull it all the way to the front because I want it I want my snap ring groove for the rear uh, planetary gear uh, to go into the groove so I'm gonna turn clockwise and pull all the way to the front sometimes it's a little bit difficult but it's do it as hard as you can or loosen up your bolts over here if you can't uh, rotate it just enough that, it, that the band loosen up itself and that you can rotate clockwise and pull forward. Now that you've done that, we get the, I'm still holding the output shaft, installing the rear planetary gear on the ring gear itself, and I pushed it down. I pushed it against the ring gear so that I can have clearance for my snap ring. And you're just gonna have to do this by feel. Uh, I know that you cannot see the snap ring groove on on the reverse drum has the snap ring groove and you're just gonna have to do this by feel just get one corner in the snap ring groove and I, I'm using my thumb and my index finger and my thumb to push it and then my index finger to get it in the groove so now that I have that in the groove I'm gonna rotate it this way a little bit I am going to lubricate this, uh, the band strut, this band strut right here. Not, I'm not going to lubricate it, but I'm going to put some green goo on it and I'm going to paste it to the case like this. So I'm going to get some green goo on my finger, put that on there on the band strut and I'm going to paste it to the case like that. So it won't go nowhere. Now I'm gonna get my band anchor, this right here, and I'm gonna put some assembly lube here, or some green goo, and green goo over here, and I'm gonna paste this to the case as well, just to get it out of the way. Like that. So this green goo right here on the top is gonna paste it to the case, and this green goo down here on the on the U form right here is gonna paste it to the to my strut like that. Now that I have that pasted on there, now I can get my drum assembly in there, and it's not gonna nothing's gonna be in the way. I already have my uh, band anchor and the strut, both of them together. Uh, here or the pivot uh, whatever that thing is called you want to call it the thingy I mean the thingy right there you know the thingy thingy right there all right and now we can get our drum assembly uh, held together if you want to or the way I do it I just put the sun shell in and you know what we're gonna have to take the rear planet off because this is this went next hold that thought let me get the a pick right quick Let's go ahead and take the snap ring out. That way you can see second try, I guess. You can see that. Now I'm going to use my snap ring. I mean my uh, pick. Just to carry my planet out. And get this uh, fluid dam slash sun shell guide or whatever. Because you don't have bushings on the sun shell. It just kind of guides itself there. And now second try on the rear planet assembly. I got carried away there a little bit trying to explain stuff and 
the thing was right here and I didn't even pay attention. Now our snap ring. So this is going to be a second show on the snap ring. So I'm going to calculate. So I'm kind of a, I'm against it like this. This is the way I'm holding it. Like this. Let's say this is already in the groove. And then I, once it's in the groove, I kind of twist. Twist like this. I twist it and then I go around. So I'm already on it. See, I'm, I'm, I'm on the groove. And then I twist with my index finger and there we go. I know I was kind of in the way. This, it's kind of hard to film that in this position or, or getting it in there without having a mini, mini micro camera in here to kind of like film in there. But I mean, I'm trying to explain everything the best I can, but I mean, sometimes it's impossible. Now I'm going to get my uh, Chrysler case closer to here. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to try and get the whole assembly in there. Sometimes it's impossible to do it because it's a little bit heavy. And then I have to flip it up and drop it in the, in the Chrysler case. Which is a 46RE case. So, like on the uh, 4R100s and the 5R110s and the E4ODs, uh, there's actually a holder, you know, that you pick up this and then you just drop it in there. This one doesn't have it. So, I'm just going to get my middle finger in, in the hole there, guide it on there. With my left hand, I'm kind of guiding, guiding everything to the output shaft. I'm going to turn the output shaft. I'm trying to engage the sun shell or the sun gear on the rear planet. Which, like I say, I mean, sometimes it's kind of a, impossible, but it is. With my thumb, I don't know if you can see it. With my thumb, I'm holding the whole assembly in there. Now I'm going to pick the whole case up. I'm just going to tighten up this bolt because I loosen them up. The ones for the rear servo. I'm going to go ahead and pick the whole thing up and just drop it in the case. I'm going to put you guys on pause then and then we're going to start assembling all the way up. All right. So here we go. All right. So I got it down in the case. Let me move the camera now and uh, so you can guys see the rest of the assembly. I'm going to go pretty quick. You'll see. All right. Let the fun begin. Let the fun begin because we're about to install the bands and I'm going to show you the way that I do it, which for me is easy. For you, why not? But I have the case in a certain way. I need to be on the on this side standing or maybe I can I don't want to rotate this because or yeah let me let me rotate it because that might be my hand is probably not going to be in the way no but you're not going to be able to see in there because this is where the uh, the band is going to go maybe if I put a little uh, Two by four down there but still it's gonna make it a little bit difficult for me but let's see I got a two by four down there and now you're looking down in there making so making myself difficult but anyways so here is the other pen anchor the one that goes on that side and uh, and then we have this one and we have our band now what I do, I just hold my band like this and I have my long screwdriver, this one. What I do with my left hand, I dropped it, I don't drop it, I hold it and then I unpaste that anchor. I'm going to show you with the, with the other band what I'm doing over here once, once I get this thing on there. So I got it on there. Now with my right hand, I'm going to install the other anchor over here. Just to hold it in place. 
and there you go now this is installed and I forgot to take the nuts off of this things the overhaul kit comes with you but I'm gonna go ahead and get it on up there screw it in and you're gonna see the band start to move and my band anchor my band anchor came off of here when I put it in the case there we go I guess when I had the case upside down this band anchor kind of uh, fell out of position but you want it let me show you let me show you with this one here so I paste this in the case get this so I paste this in the case right and then I put some assembly lube here and this is what I wanted for it to happen down in there like that and uh, I put some assembly lube here the green goo and then I paste it to the case now when I flipped it over it kind of fell out of position but I mean this is what this is what we wanted want for it to happen and then you got the other anchor so here what I was trying to show you is that on this lip middle tab right here you gotta make sure that it engages on it like that and we have the other one on the other side which ooh, where's it at I had it up here in the band somewhere and this one goes on this side like that so that's what we want it right capiche all right so uh, I'm gonna get this a little bit closer we don't have the servo installed yet we don't need to install the servo yet all right so now we're gonna drop our center support on it and here we have the uh, the center support uh, nut it stays there and I have the bolt over here on my shop towel and this one we can actually drop it here we don't need to paste it on the center support and we can just drop this now I'm st I still have that 2x4 down there and it's pushing all my drums to the side so I think I'm gonna have to that or get my input shaft and start wiggling this thing so that this thing can fall down there we go so if this thing was straight up it would have slide down like nothing but just so I can have you guys uh, looking in there it's sideways like that now there's a flat side to the snap ring and a tapered side to the snap ring or a bevel side the bevel side or the tapered side goes up towards the bell housing the snap ring opening is going to go right here because we have our turbine speed sensor or our input speed sensor here let's go ahead and drop our snap ring down and install it and there we go now we get our turbine shaft speed sensor And we're going to snake he has two square holes here two rectangular holes here and he's going to go the connector is going to go through the bottom hole through the bottom of the case which is to the pan side or towards the valve body side now i need to get my uh it's a torx 30. let me get a speed handle right quick I have a long a long 30 and then tighten it down tighten it down now we're gonna get our center support bolt which is also a 30 and I have this uh, long uh, Torx 30 so that we can get it installed because uh, it is pretty deep in there and I'm just gonna hold it with my index finger with my left hand get the bolt threaded on the nut and tighten it up snug it up nice and snug with your speed handle all right now it does not need to be like that no more 
now the overdrive clutch assembly. But before that, we need to install all the uh, the mechanism for the uh, two five band. Where is the uh, pin? So this is gonna go like this in the case. Remember, we need to, this to be like that for our band. Now I'm gonna get some assembly lube or green goo on this side of the anchor and just paste it on there like that. And I don't have to paste it to the case because I'm not sideways. All right. Now we can drop our overdrive section in it, like that. Get our band, like this, I hold it like this with my hand. Oh, whoops. Whoops. Okay. Hold on. All right. And have your long screwdriver ready. Go down. Get it away from the case and attach it to the band. Now this one doesn't fit through the bottom, so you're gonna have to hold it with your left hand and then with your finger on your right hand, align it, align it to the hole. And then get your, uh, get your pin in there. I'm gonna, have, uh, once I put it on the bench, I'm gonna remove these and uh, install the servos first and then remove these so I can get the... Uh, uh, what I like to do is take the nut off of the adjustment pin and then with my uh, wire uh, on my bench grinder, I have a wire wheel on it. I clean up all my threads real good and then get the new nut in there. All right, now we're gonna get our input shaft splined into our overdrive planet just like that and now the pump which is our bell housing oh, camera's in the way here we go all right Oops, I took the, uh, where you at? I took the uh, O-rings off my bolts. I gotta put O-rings on my bolts and uh, install them on here. And uh, we're done with this thing. And then we're gonna go back to the bench. All right guys, now I got this uh, transmission on the bench now. And uh, we're going to install the servos and we're going to adjust the bands. And then I'm gonna work on the valve body and uh, I'm not gonna film that, me working on the valve body, but I'm gonna install the Transgo shift kit that I got, the 4455, the SK44-55 on this one, and uh, install it and uh, torque it. Now, the valve body has to be torqued because if you over torque it, if you over tighten it, uh, you will have like wrong gear stars and it's not gonna work right. Uh, anyways. Sometimes the the springs one of them. It's uh, stiffer than the other one and The stiffer one always goes on the intermediate servo and then the lighter one goes on the on the uh, overdrive servo which which is uh, second and fifth and uh, third on the five speed on the four speed uh, this is second and this is fourth uh, it just is the same valve body situation and everything. It's just the way the computer uh, shifts the transmission. Now you have uh, two servos. You have a uh, Zulu Charlie, Zulu Charlie, and Alpha Bravo, Alpha Bravo. So if I take him off the the caps, you see that the Zulu Charlie has the the back of the side of the servo. It's larger than the Alpha Bravo one. The Zulu Charlie goes on the 2.5 and the Alpha Bravo goes on the Intermedia or AB and ZC. I'm just uh, using the mother terminology just so that you know uh, exactly what, what they are. Uh, let me get the snap rings. 
So everything is nice and lubricated. Now we're gonna go ahead and just push these things in and install the snap ring on it. Push the intermediate servo in and install the snap ring. Now I'm gonna flip this transmission over so you guys can see this way and we're going to torque uh, we're going to torque the servo to 72 inch pounds so I have the uh, a square socket here I'm just gonna snug it Then we're going to torque it to 72 inch pounds. Uh, it is at 108. This thing's just wore out that uh, I want to back out just enough. So we got 70 right there, 70 inch pounds, 72, 72 inch pounds, torque it to 72 inch pounds, 72 inch pounds, And we're gonna back it off one and a half turns. Install our new nuts. So it's torqued at the, the adjuster pins, 72 inch pounds, and we're going to back it up one and a half turns. As you can see where the, the uh, orientation of my speed handle so I'm gonna go one full turn and this the orientation of the speed handle is gonna end up on the opposite end over there all right and I'm holding the nut because I don't want to be screwing that thing up so that's one turn and a half that's one and a half turns get your uh, 19 millimeter wrench and Make sure you tighten it up real good because they do back out. They do like to back out. And hold your speed handle so that when you're tightening up the, the nut, it doesn't turn the, the pin. Same thing here. You can see the orientation. That's one full turn. And a half right here. One and a half. I know the book calls for more sometimes, but I've noticed that on the the E, W, and S, no, the E, on the on the uh, S, W, and N models, going by the book, it causes gear ratio error codes. Yeah, I know that's crazy. All right. So we have it uh, already assembled everything in the barrel of the case. Now I got to work on the valve body and this. And like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna film the valve body. Uh, I might film the valve body installation on the case itself, but not the. It's gonna take me a little bit of time. I got to wash it. I got to change the solenoid O-rings. I got to clean the pressure control solenoid and do some other things to it. Uh, uh, vacuum, vacuum test the circuit and then uh, install it so it's, that's going to be time consuming that's a video in itself by I mean alone on itself and uh, more than an hour long if I'm going to film the valve body whatever I do to these things so uh, just to mount it on here it don't take long so I'm going to work on the valve body now and then come back and install it film that 
And that's going to be it. All right, guys. Well, let's finish up this right here. And uh, so I already did the valve body. And it's a little bit time consuming. I mean, it's a video on its own, like I mentioned. So now we're going to install it. And the book calls for three torque uh, uh, torque settings. 115,000 for the rear servo. Uh, 97,000 for the valve body and 80,000 for the filter. So what I'm what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do 115 on this, 100 on the valve body, and 80 on the filter, and just to make the numbers rounded, right? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, start doing this. Now there's three different sizes of bolts. So we have the shortest bolts go here, and then the next the next two bolts go one on the uh, detent roller and one right here and then we have the next size longer one goes here and the other one goes around right here i think it does i'll show you right now and then he has the longest ones and one of the longest ones is for the filter itself so let's go ahead and uh install these valve body i already put the new o-rings on the harness I already connected my input speed sensor. I already put the clip on the side because it takes a clip. And uh, so the first thing that we need to do, I'm not paying attention here, is remove the servo cover. Now the servo cover we had it here because you don't want the band to uh, uh, get mispositioned or fall out of position. And then the servo is not going to engage the band or the band is going to uh, come out of the uh, Un, be unengaged from the lugs on the case and you don't want that to happen if that happens you have to pull the thing back out and uh, and disassemble the whole thing again so now we're gonna drop our valve body just be careful I'm floating it it's floating I'm not touching the case yet because you don't want to touch the case and then move it back and forth because you're gonna you're gonna disturb the position of the gasket so there we go now what I usually do I get the second to the or the there's three sizes of bolts so one goes here and one goes here I'm just gonna get him a uh, snug with my uh, speed handle and if you notice I'm not tightening anything up and I'm backing out a little bit just to uh, have a little bit of, of, of freedom of movement uh, let me get the gasket for the rear servo. I know this video is, uh, I mean, to me it's a little long because I'm trying to explain everything and uh, it's just kind of distracting a little bit, especially when you know that you have to finish this thing and uh, get it installed. And I mean, it's just, it's distracting for me. So uh, I lose my train of thought. So let's go ahead and uh, install our reverse servo cover and as you see I'm going all the way snug and then back out a little bit because I want the valve body to still move so that I can install the rest of the bolts. Now uh, these other two bolts are the same size, they're the same size, one goes here and one goes here. And if you, notice, if you notice, I'm not installing this yet because I want the valve body to be lined up and then I'm going to torque it because this bolt right here is basically one of your guide bolts. All right. So you notice that I backed out. Now, most of the rest of the bolts are the same length, which are the majority of it. But the longest one, let's go ahead and install the longest one. I got five, but we're going to put one aside because this is going to be for the filter longest 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 and longest that's four bolts that's four of the longest bolts just just pay attention to where they at and I'm I hope that uh, I lowered the camera down I should have just went all the way up and shoot down but I mean I hope that this position right here it's kind of makes it a little clear for you guys and then the rest of the bolts are all the same. 
Got a lot of bolts. I mean, you, you can use the impact in the lowest setting and just uh, snug them up a little bit, you know, like the like I have now. I just like to use a speed handle. You have more control of it. Now, I'm going to go all the way down and I'm not going to back out nothing because the valve body's already kind of a, aligned itself on it. You don't want to start tightening anything until you have all the uh, bolts threaded down. Now we're going to do inch pounds to tighten up uh, this valve body or to torque this valve body. So 100 on the valve body, it calls for 97. As a matter of fact, I got the book over there. I got it on digital format as well. So whenever you do something like this, just get the book. I have a big library of most of the transmission. I mean, through the years, uh, you end up with a big library of books. And I got, I got manuals from transmissions that I don't even see anymore. Like some old Toyotas and stuff like that your library through the years it starts to grow all right so uh, all right I'm not gonna torque that one so I'm gonna have to take it out but I'm gonna go ahead and torque the wrist and I have this it's in 72 inch pounds 82 92 okay 100 inch pounds 100 inch pounds and I'm just gonna start from the center I mean you want to follow a sequence you can do follow a sequence but I'm just gonna start from the center do 100 inch pounds I'm even gonna do 100 inch pounds on these and then do the the other five. Whoops, that one's a little sorry torque. That's how you know when that one's already torqued. You kinda the torque wrench bounced back. going to go through them again not in any specific order just make sure that you hit him twice that's a hundred inch pounds all right I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt right here. Install the detent roller. You can actually, uh, so that would be part, reverse, neutral. Just set it in neutral because you have to align your uh, range sensor. 100 inch pounds now let's go ahead and do the other five it's 115 which is very very <laughs> the bolt doesn't even turn just do it a few times The quality of this gasket is very important as well. I've had low quality gaskets blow up, uh, actually tear. This gasket is like a metal, uh, metal paper gasket. And if you get just the paper gasket by itself, uh, it will fail. So I made a 115. That's 100, an 80, an 80. 
so I'm at 80 inch pounds it's kind of hard to see I mean this thing is just is laser the numbers are laser edged and this thing is just so wore out that uh, you can barely see the numbers all right let's go ahead and connect our solenoids If you're a DIYer and you're doing something like this, I suggest that when you get your parts, just get yourself a valve body for it. Because if you make a little bitty tiny mistake on one of these valve bodies, you're gonna get lost. You will get lost. Make sure that everything's nice and installed there. Got my filter here. Just lube it up, lube up the two O-rings, align the filter, make sure that it's nice and seated. So I have my torque wrench at 80 inch pounds, snug it. And it's going to feel like it's going to go a uh, long ways because he's going to try to crush the, the washer there. See that? And it's only 80 inch pounds. He has like a fold in the center and he's going to crush this fold and then he's going to, he's going to uh, uh, torque 80 inch pounds. So there you go. That's 80 inch pounds on this thing. And now, the pan gasket. And the pan, I'm not gonna show that. I mean, that's self-explanatory. That's no big deal. But what I am going to show you is how to install the parking. I'm not gonna show how to install the extension house and that's gonna be self-explanatory as well. I'm just gonna show you how to install the parking pole on this thing. So, you put the pin on there, you put that spring, and then you install the parking, parking pole. And then you kind of put a little bit of pressure and slide it down. And then when you install it on the, on the transmission itself, just guide your uh, parking rod in through this hole. And that's it. That's it, man. All right, guys. Well, I still got to install the pan, install the extension housing, install the, the speed sensors, the two speed sensors that go on there, uh, which are these two, the output speed sensor and the sun shell speed sensor or the intermediate speed sensor and the rain sensor. And you guys don't need to see that. I mean, it's just, boop, one bolt. Well, this one here, you got to uh, center it in neutral. You see there, it says neutral. It says neutral and then it has a line right here. And then it has another line, it's not centered yet. See how the line is on the side right here? And it has to align in neutral. Let me try and uh, align it a little bit so you guys can, so you turn it. Now it is centered in neutral. The line right here to the line right there. Now you slide it on there. Put your bolts. And let me get the socket. That's it. That's it. That's why you align it in neutral, or you put when you put the the uh, detent roller, you set it on neutral, and then uh, neutralize your rain sensor and align it. That's it. All right, guys. Well, uh, this is gonna be it for this. I gotta finish it up and. Uh, 
and do the rest of the shenanigans. See y'all guys on the next video. And I got this thing upside down. This thing goes like this. See you guys on the next video.